Hi everybody and welcome to the flute practice. The school year has started for most of you guys over there in the Northern Hemisphere and one of the questions that I've often been asked is what should my practice day look like? What should I be practicing every day? So today we're going to chat a little bit about structuring your practice session. At the beginning of the summer I did a video on motivating yourself to practice. I'm going to link you guys to that if you are needing to kind of get back into the school year and you are needing to kickstart this with some serious motivation. Go check out that video. I motivated myself sometimes with that video. So I'm going to kind of group practicing into three big areas. The one area is what I would say is technique. And in technique, this is not just about getting your fingers really fast. That is one of the biggest misconceptions. This includes everything from sound and tone development, vibrato practice, articulation practice, dynamic practice, tone control and tone color practice, breathing work, breathing practice. And then of course, yes, getting your fingers fast. That is super important. The second kind of block or chunk of practice work I would say is all your repertoire whether it's band music, orchestra music, repertoire for exams, whatever it might be, all of that repertoire and perhaps you want to divide this up into two kind of separate categories of kind of like repertoire pieces, pieces of music and orchestra or band music or music maybe you have to learn for chamber music, other ensembles, whatever it might be. And then the last kind of big category that I think is so important to add in here is what I call the play time, play corner. This is the time that I get to experiment, I explore, sometimes I just play for fun because I love to play certain melodies or uh, maybe I want to improvise in this time, whatever it might be for you, this is play time, this is the time that we use to remind ourselves why we love our instrument. So your practice day is going to look slightly different. The proportions of these three areas is going to be slightly different depending on where you're at. So for example, beginning of the semester, maybe you have got a lot of music and a lot of notes to learn, in which case you're going to want to work on that repertoire section a bit more perhaps than on the technical section. But generally, I'm going to say generally, the rule for me is that most of my time and energy should go into building up technique. I know it's not particularly fun guys, I know, but the thing is that if we can set all the technique and we get all these tools together on this side of the park, the repertoire is kind of going to play itself. It's amazing. Sometimes, however, we just need those days of playtime. Like sometimes I'm not feeling motivated or inspired to practice and sometimes I just need to actually go with what I want to do or what I feel is good to do or, you know, maybe I just want to like sing and play for like a half an hour and that's it. That's absolutely fine and you're allowed to do it. Okay, let's go a little more in depth into these groups. So we have got the technique section. Now, in the technique section, I'm going to include, obviously, obviously, scales and arpeggios, like obviously. If you guys are not yet a part of my Patreon community, where we're about to launch into part two of our scale workshop, dealing with the slightly more difficult keys, you know, G flat majors and uh, all of those nasty things, get involved in that. You can go right back to the beginning, start from the beginning with F major, G major, the easy stuff. It's a really nice way to kickstart your year if you are needing something to really push you. So scales, arpeggios, they're kind of a must. Like you, you, you have to have them guys. It's, it's like a painter without paintbrushes. I think I've used this analogy before. It's just silly. Learn your scales. The next kind of set of exercises are what we refer to as daily exercises. There are so many of them. Somebody recently pointed this out to me. They're like, how do I know which one to do every day? There are so many daily exercises and that is really true. There are so many daily exercises. In the scale workshop that I'm busy doing, the patron workshop, there are kind of daily exercise type stuff there as well that kind of create that daily exercise routine for you. So you're not only learning your scales, but you're getting those daily exercises in as well. Other great daily exercises, obviously Tafan or Gobert daily exercises, of course, those nice Reichert daily exercises. Um, I would say almost like anything by Moyes. I love his books, they are so great. 
And then of course there are lovely books like the Trevor Y books and so on and so forth. Those are really, really, really great. You might want to kind of break down your flute playing into specific areas. So looking at tone, vibrato, articulation, breathing, all of those things and kind of have a list and every day look at which of those areas you're tackling, look at in a week if you're getting through some or most or at least the areas that you struggle the most with kind of getting through those areas. And this brings me to the next kind of area of technical practice which is working on a specific thing. And you need to choose this specific thing and set the goal. Be like, I am tackling my vibrato and my use of vibrato for the next seven days. Or I am going to, you know, really dig into my tone and do some great tone work. Be focused about what aspect, what technical aspect you are focusing on. Maybe it's just kind of keeping everything in shape, in which case you want to kind of create like a nice regime for yourself where you are every day working on a different technical aspect. Then there are etudes and studies, which I am such a big, huge, massive believer in. I believe we should and need to practice these guys. So basically what you're going to do is you are going to start with your scales or your nice warm up exercises, whatever they might be. And I would almost say go straight into learning one etude, at least one etude a week. In university, for those of you who are studying at college, you guys know you've got to do way more of these guys. It's because they're so great. They're so helpful. So get nice Anderson Etude books. They are available online. I have a whole list of etudes on my website. You can go check them out. Ordered more or less into like easy to most advanced. So you can find something for your level and just start working through an etude book. Once you finish your etudes, I would then do the more specific practicing. So like choosing my specific technical element. But hey guys, like this is a free world sort of <laughs> most of the time. You can choose where you want to do what and how. But I think those main technical elements should be there. Your scales, your daily exercises, your specific technical areas and your etudes. Then in terms of repertoire, like what pieces do I play? What do I do? Guys, this is where a teacher comes in handy. Like this is where you really do want to be working with the teacher and just sitting down with the teacher and getting kind of their input. They'll know your level. They'll be able to help you choose nice repertoire. And I, along with many other people online, offer lessons online. So this, for those of you who cannot get access to an in-person teacher is a great option. If you really don't have a teacher, well, you've got two options actually. The one is to just listen to a lot of music listen to pieces that you really enjoy and, and maybe perhaps kind of get a sense of oh could I play this should I try this out sometimes music is like graded you know like medium difficult advanced whatever it might be that could be a help to indicate you know what more or less level of piece you could be playing the other option is to buy nice like compendiums of pieces of music these are also really great and they usually kind of step up the level of the pieces as you go so that might be a really nice option for you too of course, there is just a certain amount of work you have to do, like learning music for band and orchestra and all of that. So like, there's no way around that. I did a uh, practice like a pro series quite a while ago where I like basically take you through the process of practicing from the very beginning all the way through to kind of setting up your practice schedule. You guys are welcome to go check that out. Then your playtime, play corner. In this corner, I really would include anything from extended techniques, so singing and playing, harmonics, whistle tones, whatever you can think of that you love and enjoy doing, to just choosing really like easy but beautiful melodies that you love to play, working on your tone in that way, to really taking anything in your practice session that you love and enjoy doing and just having some fun with it. Like, no stress, no worries, just going for it. I think finding balance in your practicing is always really important. So you always want to balance out the enjoyment and the fun with good solid technical work. Ideally, you really kind of get into that technical work that it becomes this like fun, exciting challenge that, you know, you want to work on and you want to really kind of dig into. But make sure you are getting this balance because if you don't get a balance, you are going to feel demotivated Faster than I can say demotivated, which I mean demotivated is a long word, so I guess it's not that fast, but still don't do it. I would love to encourage you guys if you are looking for a community of people that will help 
keep you inspired, will help keep you on track. I have said it a thousand times. I'm going to say it again. Go check out my Patreon page. You will not only be supporting me, which I am hugely thankful for, and it makes it possible for me to upgrade my equipment like I just have with new cameras and microphones, as well as just do this more full time and plow more into this channel and this space. There are also some great rewards for you guys there. They are one-on-one -on -one kind of consultations. You can get access to a whole bunch of workshops. You get other resources, sheet music, and, 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 and to all my amazing patrons who are just super duper awesome. You literally get access to a community of very cool people. I love you guys. You are amazing. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. Happy practicing everybody and see you next time.